My first time hands-on with the Adamant X7Ti by Mini's forum was at Computex 2024, and it took the LCD screen on a mini PC gimmick to another level. This time it's with a 4 inch touchscreen with even more detailed readouts that doesn't require any apps to run. The X7Ti also has a few other interesting features we're going to go over. Mini's forum's Adam Man brand consists of higher end offerings, and this is the second one we've looked at so far. The X7Ti is a larger and chunkier than normal mini PC with a metal case. A stand is included which props it up on an angle and makes it look like the mini is on display. You can twist it to your liking, although go too far and it'll topple over. You can also plonk it on your desk as there are rubber feet underneath. The case and ports on this mini are similar to the Mini's Forum UH125 Pro which was one of the better Intel Meteor Lake Minis around and was recommended in 2024. A difference with the X7Ti is that it features Intel's flagship Core Ultra 9 185H consisting of 16 cores, 22 threads, made up of 6 P cores, 8 E cores and 2 low power E cores. For integrated graphics, Intel's first generation ARC is included. The Adamant X7Ti starts at $669 US dollars for the bare bones on the official website and $849 USD for the 32GB RAM, 1TB SSD pre-build. There's also the Mini's Forum Oculink dock available if needed. Apart from the stand, the other accessories include a HDMI cable, manual and compact 120W power supply. On the right side of the Mini is a 3.5mm audio jack, USB 4, dual USB 3 10 gigabit and a clear CMOS. The top has a power button and a physical camera on and off switch, which basically covers the camera. Oh, and it has Windows Hello support. On top of that, there's dual digital microphones. Finally, we have a full size SD card reader. On the left side is an Oculink port, another USB 4, dual Realtek 5 gigabit LAN, which is very uncommon, DisplayPort 2.0, HDMI 2.1, USB 2, and another USB 3 10 gigabit. That's a lot of ports, and it also includes an Intel Wi-Fi 7 chip for the latest in wireless networking and Bluetooth. The 4 inch touchscreen has a resolution of 640x480, which is fine for the size. If you get the pre-build, Windows Elon Pro will be installed on the 1TB SSD. A malware scan came back clean. Ubuntu works, but the 5 gigabit LAN ports aren't detected, and the screen doesn't show any stats. The camera works fine though. You'll notice that the X7Ti's display probably hasn't been configured for your region out of the box since it'll be in Chinese. To change the language, press the settings button on the top right, then the globe of the earth, and you can choose from 9 languages. There's a clock function. Change layout, although there's no preview so you have to go back and forward. And the USB device interface screen isn't useful just shows the ports available. The main feature is the power limit selector allowing you to switch from 45 watts up to 65 maximum with 54 being the default. This either reduces or increases power usage, performance and fan noise. The default main screen shows the time and date, CPU, GPU, RAM and SSD utilization, temps, clock speeds and so on depending on the piece of hardware being monitored. There's also current fan speed and network traffic. Nice. You can change the brightness of the screen or modify the audio volume in Windows. Good for presentations or webcam adventures. All right then, let's see how the X7Ti stacks up against the competition. All tests were done using the balance and performance mode profiles. In single core Cinebench, the score was similar to the other core Ultra 9 minis reviewed, but the ASUS NUC leads them both. In multicore, the X7Ti pulls ahead of the Geekom in balance mode, but is substantially behind the ASUS NUC. In performance mode, it gets much closer to closing the gap. Geekbench, on the other hand, has all three minis similarly matched in single core. In multicore, the X7Ti switches places with the Geekom. One of the better uses for Intel minis is for their video capabilities, and the X7Ti doesn't disappoint in H.264. It's near the top with both power modes. But in the much longer AV1 test, it drops down the chart. Overall a decent result, but the ASUS NUC is quite a bit ahead. Intel mobile CPUs lead in hardware encoding, 
which offloads the tasks to the integrated graphics, and the X7Ti perform like the Ultra 7. Ok, on to 3D Mark. Strangely, the DX11 graphics test came back with a poor result. It was tested multiple times and verified over two units. This score only matches the Ultra 5, which is quite behind the others. It's extra strange because the DX12 Timespy score was the same as the other high-end Media Lake Minis and confirmed again in Steel Nomad Lite, where it shot up to second place for the Intel CPUs. So I wanted to confirm if 3 Mark's DX11 drop shows in games. In Counter-Strike 2, there's no difference. However, in League of Legends, there is a big noticeable drop in frame rate for the Atom Man. In Valorant, another drop, but it's not as large. Nor in Dota 2. If you've been following the channel, you'll know that Intel's Media Lake chips can't compete with AMDs in gaming, and the latest AAA games at 1080p low are out of reach without using image upscaling techniques. But the Atom Man offers two external graphics options. Since we have USB 4, we can add an eGPU. Here's a game running on my RTX 4070 Super eGPU dock using the USB 4 port. The other option is Oculink. Oculink worked without issue using my Ocu P4 V2 dock. One area Intel's Media Lake CPUs are able to compete better with AMD on is with emulation. You can play PS3 and Wii U game libraries at 1080p for the most part. The Adaman X7Ti is unfortunately a pain to open. First, pluck out the four glued on rubber feet. Remove the screws and pry open the lid. Watch out for the ribbon cable. Next, there are 12 screws to remove off this plate, holding the fan. Now, you have to access the two M.2 slots. One is occupied by a 2230 Gen 4 NVMe drive, and the space for another 2280 Gen 4 NVMe. To get access to the CMOS battery and M.2 wireless card, you have to unscrew the board, remove it slightly and carefully from the case, Otherwise, you'll pull out the camera ribbon cable off the board like I did, which is impossible to put back in. With the board slightly out, you need to pop the top lid out and juggle the items. Even though I screwed up with the camera ribbon cable, Mini's forum was nice enough to replace it for me so I could test the camera in my review. That being said, it's not a great design. Every camera we've looked at so far hasn't been great, nor full HD. Here you can see how this one holds up in ideal lighting conditions, along with an inbuilt microphone for audio quality. Alright, time to check out for possible audio latency issues when the system is pushed. The X7 Ti fails a test with Cinebench running in the background, a common theme with the Mini's forum units we've looked at. Intel's 185H will give you the best video editing experience using a Mini with integrated graphics, and this one's no different. Exporting is a different matter, and AMD's top mobile CPU pulls ahead. But responsive editing is more important since that's where you'll spend most of your time when working with video. There may be a Gen 4 NVMe SSD in this MIDI, but it's a slow one, getting beaten by all Gen 4 and Gen 3 drives tested so far. Well, at least it's kept cool and doesn't throttle. Mini's forum has been doing well with Bluetooth range in their minis, taking the top spots, and the X7Ti is the second best tested so far. Wireless has been a hit and miss, but I managed to play Valorant at 12 meters or 39 feet from the router without any network problem notifications popping up. Oh, and that's using the 5G band. The X7Ti draws quite a bit of power at idle. The screen doesn't cover a 6 watt difference between it and the ASUS NARC. The difference between the power modes selectable on the touchscreen isn't a lot, as the 65 watts never gets there due to thermal constraints. 
although the CPU manages to stay under 100C with both power modes. Fan noise is pretty good with the balance mode. Performance increases both idle and load fan noise. I would stick to balanced as I think the performance increase isn't big enough to warrant the extra noise. In the BIOS you can manually set the power limit in CPU configuration, power and performance. And ACPI settings has the other stuff you're most likely to look for. Finally, hardware monitor lets you set the fan mode. The X7Ti is identical in overall volume and size as the UH125 Pro I mentioned earlier. It's one of the bigger mini PCs around. Alright, so let's summarize. The Adamant X7Ti has a touchscreen with stats that works well without the need for additional software. The port selection is impressive like it was on the UH125 Pro. I like the metal case and stand and I didn't have any problems with wireless and Bluetooth which is not as common as it should be. However, disassembly is a poor experience, DX11 GPU performance isn't great, the performance mode doesn't give much extra performance and the Mini is not cheap. This one best suits those that are video editing, need the stat screen, or planning to use it with an eGPU. And that's the Minis Forum Adamant X7Ti. It has a unique gimmick that's well implemented and manages to stand out from the crowd, but it's certainly not perfect. Speaking of standing out from the crowd, check out my review of the Adamant G7PT, a mini PC specifically made for gaming in a small form factor. You can check out that video right here. Cheers.